Today's video ended up being way different than I originally thought. I honestly thought I was just gonna sit up here and benchmark some Intel iGPUs. I was gonna complain that the price to performance is terrible, but still better than not gaming at all. But no, no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, these new Intel Iris Xe laptops, they're legit AF. Let's get into it. Big thanks to Digital Chill Mart for sponsoring today's video, but hold up, before you fast forward through another pre-roll ad, we need to have a little chat. If you're watching a ZTT video right now, then chances are you're either a baller or you at least have some baller PC building genetics inside of you. And guys, I'm telling you one thing, Ballers do not use gaming PCs with an unactivated version of Windows 10. It's just too easy and cheap these days to buy a Windows 10 key on places like Digital Chill Mart. They're even giving my baller audience an exclusive 10% off discount if you use code ZTT10. Whether you're on your main baller gaming PC like mine here, or you're about to sell your latest gaming PC flip, do yourself a favor and make sure that Windows 10 key is fully activated by visiting Digital Chill Mart today. All right, so we have some seriously powerful systems right now, one being the MSI Prestige 14 Evo that Intel kindly sent out for this video, along with the newly custom built PC that I assembled on my Twitch livestream. Twitch.tv slash SaxTechTurf is where I livestream all my PC builds, by the way. And yeah, these are going to be our two main testing systems. I want to get the specs for both of these out of the way just nice and early, so try to bear with me here. We're going to start with the MSI Prestige 14 Evo, and I'm going to try to make this super quick. The CPU it's rocking is the new Intel 11th Gen i7 11850G7, which is a four core and eight threaded 28 watt chip. There's also 16 gigabytes of DDR4 clocked at 3,733 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte SSD, and most importantly, that new Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics. Intel graphics have been notoriously lagging behind Ryzen's integrated graphics for like half a decade now. I honestly wasn't even excited at all when I found out that an Intel Iris Xe laptop was arriving in the studio, but like I said, that all completely changed once I started seeing the results of my benchmarking run. For a very rough comparison of the desktop integrated graphics, we have this freshly built gaming PC. This is in no way a fair apples to apples comparison between a laptop and a desktop. That honestly doesn't even make sense in a lot of cases, but because of this GPU market right now, I wanted to provide a comparison of a graphics card less desktop gaming PC that you can actually build right now to see if you can hold off using the integrated graphics until you finally snag a GPU. Inside this build, we're rocking an Intel i5 11400, which is a six core and 12 threaded CPU. And this is running Intel's UHD graphics 730. T-Force actually helped us out with a couple of parts for this one. The first one being the RAM kit, and this is the Vulcan Z 2 by 8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 3,200 megahertz. They also kindly sent out their new Cardia 0Z 330 512 gigabyte NVMe drive, and this one is honestly kind of shaking up the market a little bit. This 512 gigabyte NVMe drive is sitting around $60 brand new on Amazon, and I have a feeling you're going to see a lot of these in my future build guides. Next up, Fantex came in clutch for this build as well. That ITX case is, of course, their new Eclipse P200A, and this is yet another one of those somewhat beginner friendly ITX cases. It's beginner friendly in the sense that it's pretty large for an ITX case. Actually, assembling the components inside the case went pretty smoothly, but there's definitely not a lot of room for cable management. And since I always put PSU cable extensions in my build guides, I definitely struggle to keep that back panel closed. The actual connectors at the top of the case are super weak and don't stay attached that easily. And I really wish they would have just went with normal screws instead. Other than that though, the two pre-installed RGB fans up at the front look beautiful, despite me throwing a simple up here fan kit in here so I could use four RGB fans instead of two and I'm also really digging that pretty simple and clean all black aesthetic. Fantex also sent out this Glacier 1 240 AIO to ensure that this specific CPU testing today stays very nice and chilly. And looping back to the power supply, Corsair actually hooked me up with the CX650F RGB power supply. Because we don't have room to mount a rear exhaust fan because I'll eventually be vertically mounting a GPU in this build, I felt that we needed some RGB towards the back of the case and this PSU is definitely getting that job done. Hey guys, real quickly, I forgot to mention in the video that I actually have my full step-by-step -step PC building tutorial for that gaming PC over on my second YouTube channel, ZTT Extras. Make sure you're subscribed over there, by the way, because I have a lot of cool content coming soon. You can click the card above or the link down in the description. All right, back to the video. So now that we know what we're working with, when you see these benchmarking numbers, I don't want you to think that this is like a heads up comparison, the desktop versus the laptop or anything, but I have a feeling that a lot of you are like me. And when you just hear the words Intel 
integrated graphics, you just naturally think poor performance and rightfully so. Instead, I want you to look at these numbers from the point of view of realizing just how far these Intel Iris Xe graphics have improved. Remember, this is a fully powered desktop gaming PC with a lot of high-end hardware in here, and this is just a tiny ultralight non-gaming laptop with a 28 watt CPU. Starting with Fortnite, I put the settings at 1080p low, however, I did slide up that resolution scale to 100%, and here you can see that although both Intel CPUs are rocking terrible 1% lows, the laptop's Iris Xe graphics almost doubled the performance of the desktop CPU. The footage that you're watching now was actually me playing on the 36 FPS desktop chip, and to be honest, I recorded all of this gaming footage that you're about to see while using the desktop, which was definitely a big mistake. Like I said in the beginning, I definitely did not expect that big of a difference going from the desktop to the laptop, so I just naturally recorded all of the gameplay footage that you're about to see using the desktop. Sorry in advance that you're going to see a ton of choppy footage. I definitely should have recorded the gameplay with the laptop instead. Next up, we have Rainbow Six Siege, and with using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p with low settings, the Iris Xe got a very respectable and playable 86 FPS average, which this time was actually over double the Intel 11400 average. My current addiction while classic was up next, and by using the 1080p level one settings, which are as low as they go, this test was just obnoxious as I got a 236 average FPS with the laptop and only a 68 FPS with the desktop. Also obnoxious was the Counter-Strike testing. In 1080p low, I got a very solid 174 average FPS. Keep in mind, we're still dealing with those rough spikes in FPS, but again, that was over double the 82 FPS of the 11400. Next up, I brought GTA 5 back into the benchmarking mix because we all know how CPU demanding this game is, and here the MSI Prestige laptop cranked out 72 FPS while the desktop only cranked out 43. After that was Valheim, which honestly had both machines begging for mercy, but here again is another over double result going from the custom build to the laptop. I honestly benchmarked even more games than that. Rogue Company, Apex Legends, 3D Mark's Firestrike, it's all the same thing. The laptop's Iris Xe graphics performed roughly over double what the desktop iGPU did, it's pretty obnoxious. Honestly, after processing the results, I'm a little torn on how we should feel. On one hand, I'm actually really excited for the future of Intel's ultralight laptops because you definitely could get some serious gaming session in on these laptops that aren't even designed for gaming. This laptop isn't even marketed towards gamers. I'm sure somebody reviewing this laptop as a professional or a creator would be perfectly fine with it, but here I am getting wrapped up on just how good the gaming performance is with the iGPU. On the other hand though, at what point do we get mad at Intel for still lagging behind in their desktop iGPU department. Now granted, this 11400 is only rocking the UHD 730, which is considerably underperforming compared to like the UHD 750. Check out Scattervolt's recent video up in the top right hand corner for the benchmarks on that, but still, this is a desktop iGPU, and even during our rough GPU market, I can't possibly recommend you use this as a temporary option. In Mark's video, he benchmarked the iGPUs with higher end desktop processors and definitely got some better results than mine, but still, it's hard to recommend spending the money on something like an expensive i7 processor, knowing that you're still gonna have some rough 1080p low gameplay while you wait for a GPU. So my recommendation for using a Ryzen APU on a desktop gaming PC is still very valid, provided you can get one at a not obnoxious price. But as we learned today, you could also just go down the Intel Iris Xe route with a laptop, or you could also just get a laptop with a dedicated GPU as well. Even today with the chip shortage, there's still a ton of gaming laptops and Intel Iris Xe models available for purchase today. And if you're still anxiously waiting to jump into PC gaming, going down the laptop route is honestly probably the easiest bet right now. Some real quick extra notes before wrapping up the video. First, I wanna clarify that all my testing on the laptop was done with the power setting set to max performance. This laptop will directly limit the amount of wattage that the chip is getting as you scale this slider down. So when gaming, you definitely wanna keep this maxed out. Cooling is also super important with any laptop, and this MSI Prestige's mechanical lift when opening the display does a pretty good job of ensuring it has decent airflow at the bottom here. And finally, the other really cool feature is that the Intel Iris Xe graphics, for whatever reason, doesn't actually require you to plug in the power cable nearly as much as like pretty much every other laptop. When switching over to battery power, as long as that power slider is still all the way to the right, you'll see a single digit performance drop off, and that's great for those of you that are interested in gaming on the go completely portable. Make sure you guys let me know what you thought of the testing down in the comment section down below. If you are in the market for a gaming laptop, then be sure to click the video that's on the screen now, which is my $250 laptop setup guide. That way you're equipped with all the best peripherals for a super budget price. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.